Welcome back to Call of the Wild, The Angler. We are once again heading out here, and if you caught the earlier video, you may have seen that we had, I believe, a northern pike end up breaking off our line due to probably not adjusting the drag correctly and maybe even having a little bit too light of equipment, but I got to thinking, we only have a couple of days of early access here before the full release of the game, so why not just go all in and try to get the absolute best equipment in the game? So. We are quite a ways shy of that right now, but we're going to head out and start catching some fish and see if we can get to, I think it's 3800 for the best fishing rod. Now on one hand, we could stick with the spinnerbait and probably catch a lot of fish relatively quickly, but I want to start working on some of the other techniques for other lures and I really do like the popper, so I want to try it in the lily pads here. I thought I saw a fish surface a bit ago. And we'll start with a bit of a stop and go motion and see if we can get anything to happen here. Ooh, there we go. I don't know what might be in there. The tension is decent-ish. And I hate to harp on it. I'll try to only say it the once in this video. But I really, really wish we could just keep the camera on the fish a bit better. We saw the tension, though, getting into the red. Which is probably a good sign that this might be a good-sized fish. I saw it for just a second there. What is that? Is that a pike or maybe a, a pickerel? There's a long kind of slender fish. We are about to find out. That is a northern pike. I would not have expected to catch that in here or on a popper, but that's actually pretty cool. That does appear to be the model that I saw in the water from the boat. So I think that is what broke off our line last time. That's actually pretty cool. I wish we were a little bit more kind of in the sunlight, but not bad little picture with our first pike and let's try that again that's pretty cool as well I was curious that must be a pretty decent one now I have the drag set pretty high we are just not going anywhere we must have been there's got to be some kind of something under the water that's obstructing our line so we're gonna have to try to guide the fish around that let's actually lower the drag down a little bit here I'm trying to learn how to do that a little bit more but it, it feels to me although maybe we got it around there it seemed like there must have been a rock or something because we were just sort of stuck but i don't know if this is a pike again maybe we can get a little bit of sort of revenge earlier i mean we can move it a bit but then we get into certain spots and it just feels like we're stuck i don't want to snap the line maybe you're gonna drop the drag down a little bit more this could turn into a little bit of a fight. I like this. Now we're starting to lose ground. It's just running away pretty quickly with it. Gonna go a little higher on the drag and let it try to tire itself out. I feel like, just compared to what we saw with the previous big fish, is not just running straight out to whatever it was, 90 and a half meters, and then, you know, maxing out our line. Like, I think we can get this in. Although, I don't think it's going to be a... 30 second fight like it's been with some of the others this one is putting up a real fight and actually I wonder if we really did have a rock or anything under the water or if it's just that big it's not surfacing or anything so hard to see what it is out there at that distance I think we can kind of get like every now and then we make a little progress and then we start to lose ground but it feels like we can actually tire this one out as opposed to just end up having our line snapped Getting a little progress by pumping, but we gotta be careful not to have the the tension too high. And now, of course, we're back over 75 meters, but we were able to bring him in a little bit by doing that. Man, <laughs> this is, for the first time, this feels like a, a proper right balance of equipment and fish to have a, a legitimate struggle. Every time we get, like, 86 meters, I start to worry, because we, we may see it here. We're right at the max amount of line that we have on this reel. I mean, we just cannot go any farther. I can't change the drag. Maybe that's what happens when you get to the, the max line length. It is. So, we gotta be really careful here until he kind of tires himself out. There's a balance in here right around 60% on the drag where we could pretty well kind of fight against him but not get too close to the tension marker, and he can still pull line out if he needs to. But, I just, we can't seem to get him more than about, you know, three, four meters in. 
and then he just takes off again and gets to that max distance. I feel like we may be getting a little bit somewhere. One thing that's being relatively effective is kind of just pulling him in like this with the drag set high enough that he doesn't just pull line out. We had him in there close to 80 meters for a bit. This is just going to be a long fight, but the fact that we're able to kind of, you know, use the length of this rod to our advantage? I don't know, can we can we get him? 80 meters is a long way if it's going to be this big a fight the whole way. That said, we're now under 80. Got to be careful on that line tension, but it does feel to me like we got to keep it at least relatively high because he still does have the ability to take off. He may be more tired out, but he is far from being done. I'm trying to keep it in the area of like half to three quarters. That seems to do the most to prevent him from just basically undoing all of our progress of getting him into about 75. Under 70 now, but every time we get in this area, this is more or less what happens. It's almost as if he could spot us from there and, and is getting spooked and taken off again. And just like that, 10 meters of progress that took 5-10 minutes is undone. I kind of think we might be onto something here. I'm not sure why it would be, but there's almost like a sweet spot right in this area where we're not placing too much tension on the rod. We can generally just kind of reel in and make some progress. We had him close to 70, of course he's running out past 80 again, but this is kind of working. Under 70 for the first time in probably 15 minutes. If we can keep this up, we might be able to land him. Ooh, I think it is a pike. He actually finally, the first time this entire fight, he jumped out of the water. Getting close to under 50. In fact, under 50 now for a moment there. That's interesting. He's really trying to shake the hook loose. As long as we keep tension, I think we're okay when he does that. Going under 30 meters now. The first one we hooked somewhere in the area of this 25, 26 meter mark. And that took... 45 seconds to reel in, if that. I wouldn't call this the home stretch just yet, but I do think we've got him pretty well tired out to where we just need to keep the tension so he can't throw the hook. Under 10 meters now. I still can't see the fish. I want to know how big he is. And I wonder, is there an aspect of, like, the fish seeing you and actually spooking and, and getting a little bit of a second wind? Because he took off right back to 15 darn near immediately. And I, I said that I thought he was pretty well tired out, but it ain't quite over just yet. I think, jeez, we are not going to want to mess with that. I think it's probably going to be best to go easy here. We've done all this work so far. I was going to try to just pull him in, but I think we better stick to the script here. He just will not give up. We're back to under 10 meters. Oh, God. Finally, that is a nice, nice sized fish. I do think he is like seeing us and trying to get away when we get him in that close. Let's see if we can get a little distance. I feel like it's about three-ish meters here. It depends on how close you are to the surface of the water as to how close you need to actually get the fish to land it. Do not want to have this line snap at this point in the game. Man, that's a really nice pike. We are right there. And of course, he is just going straight back the other way. I'm trying to just jar him over here. He's got almost nothing left, you can tell. 2.7 meters we got him in. That is a gold northern pike. My goodness gracious, that was an unbelievably long fight. About 23 minutes for a 14 and a half pound pike on this rod and reel combination, which is pretty solid. That was nuts. At least we happen to be standing in a fantastic spot for a picture of that pike. That was the first time we've had like an exhilarating fight. We obviously had the one that got away in the last video. 100 credits for that fish. I will say, as much fun as that was, that is not going to help us in terms of earning credits quickly. Only because we can catch a bunch of smaller fish a lot more quickly. But that was the most fun I've had fighting one so far. There is a pretty nice bass heading over to this as well on this kind of twitching technique. That's what I got to thinking as I walked over here. I forgot. We caught that big pike using the twitching technique, and I'm honestly a lot more proud of that than anything on a spinnerbait, but there's a gold largemouth bass to follow it up, but you can see the difference. 
And I don't know what our credit yield from this will be. If we... We might as well take a picture of that, too. We're being rather lucky here in getting good light for these photos. So that was worth 200 credits, plus the level up to 24. That'll help a lot. So we've caught some pike. We caught a bass there just in passing. I want to come down here and see if we can get a decent rainbow, and I'm coming back to this same pond where we got one in the last video. This little spot down here, kind of center of the map, it's a pretty good spot and actually has the golden trout in here as well. So what I'm also going to do is switch to the spinnerbait just for the sake of showing the difference. Because as much as it is nice to pretty consistently get bites with basically every cast, I do like the required kind of precision and skill that goes into using like the twitching or even the stop and go methods that we had with the popper. So we're just going to bring this along. I actually saw a really nice fish to the left right when we casted. And I'm hoping at least that it's maybe going to notice our lore here as we retrieve. And in fact, I can see it coming over there. That is a nice fish. It may be the rainbow we're looking for just based on the, the body size of that thing. And I think it should go ahead and hit, like I said, they hit the spinner pretty much every time. I realized we weren't actually on the minimum retrieval speed, we were on two. Which I have noticed, and, and I hope this is something that maybe changes. By the way, I don't think we've seen our line tension go this high with the rainbow just yet. But it seems as though the fish actually can't really catch up to a constant retrieval lure unless you're on the lowest, slowest speed. So, hope that changes. But... This guy's liking to change directions and mess with our tension, but I, I can't say I've had a rainbow do anything but just basically come flying in uh, along the line, so maybe a good one here? I mean, he's far from making this easy. It looked like a really good fish when I could see it there. I increased the drag a little bit just because I don't think he's going to snap our line, but I also want to try to get him in relatively quickly. Again, I, I saw him for just a moment there, but it's tough to get a really good look at him. I think we'll go ahead and... Oh my goodness, that was a big fish. We're going to try to get him in there through pumping. Look at the size of that trout. I switched back to the metric system just when I was moving along and set a waypoint. What is 7.56 kg in pounds? I'm going to have to do that conversion. But apparently it is 0.35 bigger than our last one. And to be honest, I, I don't even remember catching that one. It must have been in the little bit of off-camera grinding I did to try to work on getting these coins, but that's a really, really nice fish. I wonder what diamond would be for them. I mean, that that looks like a huge rainbow to me, but we'll release that. Maybe we'll try to catch one more over here as we level up to 25 now. There's a huge golden right there out in front of us. We had a cast too slow there, so flip cast will work. He is coming our way towards the spinnerbait. I mean, look at the difference between the one down there lower. All right, tension actually isn't that bad. Got into the red there for a second. We're a little kind of far from the shore and I don't love that. Apparently that will work. That's a, that's a diamond golden trout at 4.59 kg. I didn't change the unit system back. Look at the size of that fish. I really thought the fight would have been more difficult. Though then again, we were able to catch a pike, which would be darn near twice that weight with the same rod and, and reel and line combo. I can't believe we just pulled that out of this little pond. And it's so cool that we identified this, you know, earlier as we did the exploration through the missions. Look at that. They are one of the coolest looking trout species, if not the coolest looking, and I'm really glad they put them in the game. Out there in the sun and everything, that is just, that could not have gone any better. I so wish that I had changed the unit system, but our first diamond fish is a golden trout. That one was high on my list, and we got it done. That was quite a stretch, but I want to just try a little bit of topwater fishing for the trout, because all I've really done is the spinnerbait. That, was that a golden? That looked big again if it was. And I mean, as of now, it is hard to both watch what we're doing with our technique. That did not set. So we're gonna need to wait for another strike. There we go. That might've been on me, I'm not sure. 
but uh apparently they like topwater lures another diamond golden trout and i still haven't <laughs> i still haven't turned back to the the right uh unit system yet 4.05 kg a length of 0.59 meters on a popper maybe i'll actually remember to change our units back this time all i was trying to do was show off how the topwater lure works well i will say i'm a lot more kind of proud of that one because we had a little bit of you know technique that goes into it using the twitching rather than just the constant retrieval with the spinnerbait wish it was a little lighter out but this lake is insane so that fish got us to 5,400 credits just about. And I think that means we're actually going to be good to go and buy the most expensive equipment in the game. Now, I kind of wish it would take a little bit longer to do that. We're at maybe six hours of gameplay so far. But we should be able to go and purchase the best rod, reel, and line combo. So in the spinning rod category, the most expensive one is this 1,825 credit one that I cannot pronounce a strength of 66 pounds and a max line strength of 28 pounds but if we go to the bait casters there is a 3500 credit rod which has a strength of 110 pounds and a max line strength of 55 pounds that's what i wanted to grind for today so we're gonna buy that and i guess that i misremembered the cost of the most expensive bait casting reel the mediator is 2000 coins which we're not that far off, we're almost 1900, and then the line shouldn't be that bad. I was going to go with the 55 pound braid just to have basically the best equipment we can get, and that'll be another 800 coins, so I think we'll just go and catch some fish real quick, should not take long to do that. I don't know, this might be a pretty nice bass. I, I'm assuming it's a bass anyway, everything else in here has been. But as you can see, we're kind of hitting that red tension line again, and we're actually assuming we can land this guy to the point where we should have enough credits to purchase the remaining equipment we need. But he is definitely not trying to make it easy on us. I don't think this is going to be any kind of pike fight like we had earlier, but it's not exactly... The way we've brought the rest of the, the fish in from this place, which is basically at will, we're pretty much able to control him with a slightly higher drag setting. So I'm curious to see what this ends up being. He still has not really made it all that clear. Even out there at 6 meters, the way this water surface is, I can't quite tell. It's too slender though to be a bass. That is another pike. Not going to be nearly as big as the last one, just a silver, but... Once I get out of popper, I wouldn't have guessed there were going to be any pike in here. I thought this was kind of just a random bass spawn, but that, coupled with the fact that we just leveled up, is going to take us to 2,900 credits and allow us to buy that remaining equipment. I also went ahead and grabbed the second biggest crankbait from the store. I figured the biggest one might be a bit much for some of the smaller fish, and I'm not too sure what we're going to get into just yet, but obviously with this setup, 55 pound braid and all we are looking for a good sized fish so we are going to go and grab a boat and we're going to see what we can do here now something like a depth finder or fish finder or different equipment you could have on your boat could be a really cool addition someday but i'm just going to assume being this far from any kind of land it's probably pretty deep out in here so we're just going to chuck this crankbait out got out to about 36 meters there and we can go with a constant retrieval, and apparently that can still work with this type of lure. So let's just see if we can get anything to strike. Well, one thing's for sure. The pike do seem to like the topwater lure. There are so many around here, but they were not interested in the crankbait whatsoever. Switch to the popper first cast. We have a relatively small pike, but you can see the difference here. With this rod 
and with the, the line and reel combination that we have going on, that bike is no big deal to land. Even still, it's roughly the size of the one that we got at the lake there before we got the amount of credits that we needed to purchase this stuff. And that was no big deal, so getting that rod is certainly going to help us. I kind of wish that we could have had some success with the crankbait. That's actually not a bad pike. Maybe we can get his attention here. I would say that worked pretty well. That's amazing. He, That was not difficult to land him even slightly. A 10 pound pike just pulled him straight in. Maybe it was the distance, but I mean, that, whatever it was, 3,500 credits, if we can catch pike like that, it'll pay for itself pretty quickly. I mean, the consistency of that topwater lure, but I mean, this 55 pound braid, and I guess probably the rod and reel combination help too, an eight pound pike, not, not really anything it can do other than just get dragged in. So I'm gonna say, as we've leveled up again, probably we should actually go and find something a little bigger to go after. Now this is an interesting lake. I've been casting out a decent amount with the popper, and in most other places, just doing that causes other fish to surface, but around here, it is absolutely still. So what I'm thinking we're gonna do is go back once again, get some kind of bait. I'm not even sure what we're gonna get yet, but something that we can just cast out and wait and see if we get any different result, because my guess is whatever fish live there are probably way further down than what we can reach at the surface. I sort of changed my mind a little bit and went with a soft plastic worm and a jig head. Just gonna see if that does us any good. That area is really appealing to me, so I wanna see if we can pull anything out of there. I did just see some bubbles over there, so we're gonna cast out that way. Just gonna go ahead and let this thing sink. We gotta go all the way down to 34.4 meters, so we definitely found a good deep area of this lake. There's actually even more bubbles off to the right there, but worst case, because of the sinking, we may need to actually end up going that way a little bit farther, but once we get down there, we'll do a little jigging and see what happens. That is a gigantic golden trout. I have a feeling we could have a diamond one out here again. By the way, I don't think I've mentioned it. You can right click to just flip cast, which is quite nice actually for situations like this. So I'm pretty sure we still have the popper on. I didn't even look. He is kind of heading this way though, so if we keep this up, we might be able to land a pretty big fish into this boat. At least as long as that really is a golden in it. Certainly appeared to be. With this rod though, goldens are still no problem, even if they are potentially the biggest that we've seen. That is a 8.74 pound diamond golden trout. Now actually I don't think that is as big as the others that we caught. We were in the uh, metric system there, so it was different. Now, it must be session-based when it shows the improvement, which is interesting. I kind of wish it wasn't, but I guess that just is what it is. Not bad. Cool that we actually caught one out on a boat. That is our third diamond golden trout today, and maybe they are not so rare compared to other fish. I do wish, by the way, there was like a release animation and stuff like that. Maybe that'll happen down the line, but yet again, we end up catching things with the popper and not getting to make much use of the jig. Now, I'm seeing some fish surface around here. The water here is really, really nice. I wonder, I'm gonna try something. So with the bait caster, we can't use just like a, a normal bobber setup. We can do that with this rod, so let's set that up. Well, it would seem as though we still have plenty to learn with jigging and even bay fishing at these deeper depths because we were not able to have any luck. Switch back to a popper real quick. My goodness. I wasn't aware that we had a golden trout of that size on the hook. A fourth diamond golden trout today. I wonder, should diamond be more like nine pounds or something like that? I'm gonna have to go back and do the calculations of the couple that we caught on the metric system just to compare. I actually thought that might have been a rainbow because I saw one in that area, but that is pretty insane. This lake and that other small lake both had at least two diamond golden trout in them, but I think on that note, we were at least able to get the bait casting rod and reel combo that we wanted. 
and maybe before the next video we'll be able to figure out a little bit about the best locations and methods to use that and try to bring in some bigger fish. The whatever it was 18 pound pike today was pretty cool but I'm looking to top 20 pounds in the next video but as for now that is going to do it for this one so as always thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.